Hello everyone, Master Xeon 1001 here, and in this video for RN42 Part 2, the YouTube section, I wanted to just um, go over the hardening of the helmet more in depth. So in the last video you saw me um, go through the process of retopology um, to get all of these little plates that I'll now use hard ops in order to solidify. So first, running the uh, S sharpen and C sharpen, you see they basically do nothing because the uh, form is curved. So for this, it'll require a more manual touch. So the first thing is under the select menu, I'll select the boundary loops and then just go through and just specifically mark these as sharp. So it's setting the bevel weight in addition to the uh, edge creasing, in addition to the um, the other one I'm always talking about. So, you know, that's shift E uh, to bring up the edge menu if you're you know, going through this process manually. However, you know, going through that over and over began driving me crazy. So now I'm actually uh, trying to create this hard ops to, um, you know, reduce the amount of keystrokes I do in these uh, repetitious operations. So, you know, nothing fancy here. You'll just see me go through and just slowly sharpen it up. Uh, you can see how sub D is kind of having its way with it, uh, bending things in ways that I don't want them to, curving things in areas where I'd prefer that it be stiff. Now, in the older models, um, well, if you've been watching my channel for a while, um, I'm hoping that you know these videos show a sort of evolution in my approach to hard surface. Um, you know, in the older ones, like I think in the tutorial, how to concept a robot at Blender. You know, I used a completely um, premature version of this technique before I was, um, you know, alerted to the the importance of, you know, my other bevels. So, you know, everything that I'm, I say on my channel is, you know, nothing by any means is set in stone. You know, there could be a, a revelation revealed to me any day by people far more brilliant than me at art. Um, and in fact, it happens all the time, which is... Uh, what drives my um, continued pursuit of growth. Um, so with that disclaimer aside, you know, definitely don't take anything I say as law. Um, you know, I was <laughs> telling someone in the last comments, you know, they were um, in the last video's comments, they were like, what program should I use? Should I use Blender or ZBrush? You know, don't ask that, you know, use whatever program you want to use. You know, Z if ZBrush is easier, use ZBrush. You know, I just happen to go with Blender because, you know, for one, I know it's free. Uh, for two, it gets the job done. I could go on ZBrush and I guarantee you it'll be a much easier time. However, the hardness would come at um, a slightly different price. You know, I have a completely different rant for ZBrush, but, you know, before you get in, try to, you know, throw shots at ZBrush, you know, I could also give an equally vicious rant about Blender, you know, like, um, and things that I personally feel are shortcomings. However, I just look at it as a uh, developmental quirks that'll be um, ironed out over time. Now you see here that I'm using the mirror tools, which is a uh, fantastic add-on. Uh, I'm just using curve stretch and curve guide in order to allow me to uh, kind of guide the contours of this. You know, pretty much I'm just making a selection, clicking on the curve stretch button over there on the left and just getting it in there. But, you know, this is uh, also something that wasn't, um, you know, present in my previous um, designs was um, shape congruency among the different pieces. And it was because of the introduction of this tool that these sort of uh, design choices became possible for me. So with that said, you know, I can't wait till I'm um, coming back to y'all ranting about something else in hard surface that I need to focus on that is the... Uh, the new thing that you know I'm obsessed with right now it's bevels but you know surfaces is next topology is also coming you know these are all things that I do obsess with however you know you got to pick your battles you can't be spending forever fighting it so once I applied the subdivision to mirror you can see that it got rid of the sharp however I remarked it as sharp put a subdivision on it you know uh, put a solidify removed it and gave it a secondary material just to make it black. Now, usually after uh, dropping all these materials, um, I'll use the uh, second material index in order to 
isolate the interior faces and specifically delete them. So that's something that I'm still doing. Now you also see that whenever I layered a bevel onto it that it definitely adds another degree of intensity and sharpness to the model that I felt previously was not there. In fact, you know, when I was working on it and I saw this, I was kind of like, you know, holy mackerel. Um, so definitely, uh, if you're using the add-on, try it out. You know, of course, thank everyone who picked it up for their support. Uh, it definitely means a lot to me. And also, um, you know, keeps me going. Uh, so, you know, a little bit of sculpting is required to just kind of perfect these pieces, always. However, you know, I had um, big, big ambitions for this particular model as far as uh, making inner cuts and getting the pieces more connected friendly. However, you know, back to picking my own battles, I decided that, you know, that was a battle that um, maybe didn't need to be fought, or I could have just taken it on with just some, um, you know, traditional modeling. So now you see that it's slightly denser. However, this gives the bevel enough room to uh, maneuver and manage, as well as uh, allows me to begin bullying it without any sort of remorse and still keep the same level of sharpness and even use bevels in end gone heavy areas. So now I'm creating a light. You know, as far as the light, I just put a plain subdivided double inset separate with P. And that just gives me my overhead light. You know, I, I like that uh, like kind of car rendering type of look so it's one that um, I'm always going towards however at the end of this video I do want to do a part that isn't sped up where I'm just showing y'all a couple of things with lighting like I've been experimenting with using like a uh, vertex painting and spheres for lighting and it was coming up with some really interesting combinations the other day and I was uh, telling the guy I was hanging out with uh, Ivan I was like yeah I think I'm gonna <laughs> throw this in my next video you know this is uh, this is awesome so, you know, at this part, I was actually talking about vertex paint for color selection and how you can't use the brushes to paint it because you can't paint by the faces. However, you can manually select faces and then drop the colors with shift K. However, I'm not doing that in this video, but that's just to explain it. Now I took all the sharp lines and also marked them as seams temporarily, just so I can go and make these quick selections using L. In fact, you can see that in the bottom left corner and just drop in different materials on it. Um, like on the next model, I'm definitely gonna be a lot more focused in my approach as far as um, you know my selections. However, you know, I was definitely pleased with the um, amount of speed I was able to get here. In fact, you know, there's the um, model right there. I'll go ahead and drop in a, and HDRI. As far as HDRIs, um, I went to a site called SIBL. You can type that into Google and just download their whole archive. It comes with the 8K, the 2K, um, the backplates, and the blurred EMV maps, which is what I like to use for uh, kind of dreamy global illumination type lighting. Um, now, even though this video sped up, you know. Cycles renders robots pretty darn fast um, compared to any other engine that's you know rendering using samples, and that's U2 NVIDIA iRay. Um, you know the only one that uh, probably ha gives it gives it a run for its money is Keyshot, just because Keyshot has um, a little bit going for it as far as its ease of use, but you know. Uh, cycles is still a beaut. In fact, you know, I absolutely adore, um, you know, pressing shift Z and just watching it happen. In fact, you see here, I put a chrome trim on it using the uh, sharp edges to just make a quick skin. Usually I'll just bake that into a normal map, but I was just doing it just to uh, kind of just show off. Um, like I said, this was a uh, live demonstration uh, I was doing for someone. So yeah, I was just kind of showcasing how I would use, um, hard ops with a um, you know a curved model like this because it wasn't something that I thought of when I originally made it and here I am zooming in to show that you know the bevels don't really work so great for the materials however covering it with a little bit of trim will make it and I'll just you know ignore that and build some pieces in but you know it's no biggie in fact no one's no one's getting up that close in fact by that time you know um, this thing will be UV uh, taken into a uh, substance painter, my painter of choice. 
and or Quixel, um, but you know, whenever it comes to these materials in the viewport, usually I just do it as a kind of a placeholder because it's just boring looking at gray stuff. Um, you know, I always um, accidentally give out my startup file by accident, but on layer 10 is a, a sphere that just has a whole ton of materials just uh, there for me to quickly just grab and put in the scene. It's not the most efficient way. However, once I usually start the project a bit, I'll delete the sphere and clean the file so there's not a bunch of uh, unused materials. But, you know, um, you definitely want to collect them. I mean, you know, Blend Swap has a great collection. Tears of Steel had an awesome collection. Um, the Shader Forge series on um, Blender Cookie also was a uh, good informative course. Um, you know, I think in the link of the description, I'll uh, link um, to a channel I've been checking out lately called uh, Cynical, Cynical Cat Pro who is always talking about Blender's materials and ways that uh, they can be made better to be more physically accurate. And the video is looping too, so you know we'll pause here and then I'll jump over into Blender. So here we are in just a regular scene with the uh, helmet. In fact, if I um, go ahead and render it, you see that the only lighting is the uh, little accents in the corner. However, on the outside of this, I have a very large cube sphere you know, I, I could have went with the icosphere or the, uh, you know, was the other one, the UV sphere. However, you know, it has nasty poles on the top, so it isn't necessarily ideal. Uh, if we go over in this view, I can uh, shift Z and start rendering, and you can see it. Now, I do want to show off that, uh, you know, for this, in the node editor, this has a material called Overlight, which isn't anything special. In fact, We'll get rid of these. So all it is is a color plugged up to an emission going out or uh, an attribute of call, which is the uh, vertex color information of the object. You know, don't know why I'm going over all this nor all this um, basic stuff, but now that's on the outside. And so this is also set up to not show up in the render and show up as only wires. So in only render mode, you can't see it. However, um, if you press V, you can go in vertex paint mode. In fact, let's uh, go back to that layer. There we go. And you can just start painting on it and see your light as you press V to get out showing up on the model. So, you know, this is pretty cool. In fact, the uh, last render I did of it was done using this technique. Like, uh, you know, by no means you should probably not light your scene with this, but it's something fun worth uh, experimenting with. In fact, I'm just uh, painting in colors. And because it's vertex paint, it comes out a little rough. However, there's ways to uh, adjust that in the end. So I'll put a couple of blues in there and touch up on some greens here. And Every time I come out, you can see, you know, the effect that it has on the model here. However, I'm on the wrong layer. Here we go. So it's quite a quite a vibrant job here. However, you know, we can even take it a step further. So I'm going to go in edit mode, and I'm just going to select this top half, and um, let's turn on keystrokes. There we go. And while we're in edit mode, I'm just going to go under select and choose check or deselect and you know I already got the uh, selection raised up quite a bit however that'll be my selection and by clicking this button your edit mode selection will become your highlight selection so I'm just going to throw this down to black throw it back up to white press shift K and then press V and now we can see the effects of that now I'll go back in here and we'll come out and under paint, I'll choose smooth vertex colors twice. And so now we have a much smoother um, transition of the lights going on here. So, you know, the final thing I'll do is, you know, play with the rotation and get it where I want. And, you know, I can even go in here and paint out areas that, uh, paint out things I don't want like that 
And even, you know, Shift-K painted all black. And, you know, I'll just go inside view real quick and reset the rotation. So this is, um, you know, an added bonus, so I didn't rehearse any of this. So excuse me for bringing up windows of images I'm looking at. So, you know, I'll select these rings, press V in object mode, not in edit mode. That'll rip the geometry out. And, you know, put in some stripes. And maybe uh, go to the back and, uh, you know, we'll paint some, bl some uh, blue in here. Let's go back to regular view. put just a little bit of yellow in here you know I'm pretty sure I can uh, come up with something cool before I end this video I don't want to just show you all just a picture and then be like all right that's it see you later you know so something like that and then even here if I wanted to just start um, you know, post correctness. I could, um, you know, go under the hue saturation, start turning down the sat a little bit if I'm wanting to, uh, you know, desaturate it or uh, actually wrong one. It's this one. However, we'll just keep it as normal. And so, you know, with something like this, we can just let it just keep rendering. And, you know, further play with it and tune it. However, you know, looks kind of um, neon with the, the orange creeping in, you know. Let's uh, get that around the perimeter. There we go. And see, I can even select the helmet. And the shader for this is uh, pretty straightforward. However, at the beginning is this. And we'll just give it an interesting color. Red. You know, my go-to color. In fact, we'll change it to yellow. Just so there is a, a certain person that isn't complaining about it. And let this render out. And you can just rotate this thing and just get all sorts of uh, alternating combinations. But it's definitely something worth experimenting with. And so, you know, that'll conclude it for this RN42 uh, time lapse recap part two. However, you know, more than likely I'll be back with a whole nother video talking about something completely different. However, if you are interested in the full tutorial, definitely uh, check out the hard ops since it is a tutorial built for that. And with that, happy blending.